the light is on. Good evening. Welcome to the January 21st Town Council meeting. We'll call the meeting to order, and at this time, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And at this time, we'll have roll call. Council Devine? Present. Council Donovan? Here. Council Katarina? Present. Council St. Clair? Here. Council Blaze? Here. Council Hayes? Here. Council Chair Holbrook? I am here, too. So we will go ahead and move on to general public comments, item number four. And you see him shaking his head that he does not want to speak, our, our only, <laughs> only member in the audience this evening. So I'm going to go ahead and close general public comments. And item number five is minutes of the January 7th regular meeting. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. And is there any discussion? All right. And seeing none, all those in favor? And moving on. Um, there are no adjustments to the agenda, and I will sign items for treasurer warrants as we go along in the meeting, which there, there is no old business. And so for new business tonight, we have order number 15-005, first reading the proposed amendments to the Chapter 1301, the General Assistance Ordinance, pursuant to Title 22, MRSA 4305. And Tom, would you mind sure. introducing that? For uh, those returning counselors, you'll recall seeing this. This is kind of an annual, I'll call it rite of passage. Uh, essentially, uh, the state dictates what the uh, GAA, that's general assistance, um, amount should be, and those do change year to year. And what you have before you are the state recommended, and frankly, we have no latitude uh, other than to accept them. Um, <laughs> so their recommendation, incidentally, we did try to have a, a blanket uh, action on the bar council such that this that would just happen routinely, but we've been since directed by the town attorney that we really need to have the council take annual action to approve them. Tody also has a little update she'd like to share with you. Uh, I, as of uh, this evening, I received Appendix D, which includes adjustments to utilities, which are electricity, heating fuel, uh, <coughs> personal care, and ho household supplies. So I'll um, hand those out. That would need to be amended to inc be included in this first reading. Okay. So that we didn't get a new packet. All right, so is there a motion to amend? Motion to amend. Oh, sorry, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, actually, first is comment. So uh, is there anybody that would wish to, to speak on this item? And seeing none, we will close, close the comment. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. And... Um, we yeah, I need, we need a first to amend right. the main motion. Is right. there a motion for that? So moved. And a second. And any discussion? All right. Motion on the amendment, which would be to just include the document, um, the yeah. document appendix D. So moved. Is there any discussion? All right. Mm -hmm. All those in favor on the amendment? All right. And back to the main motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? All right. And seeing none, all those in favor? Yeah. Oh. Thank you. All right, on to order number 15-006, first reading and refer to the planning board on the proposed amendment to, chat to contract zone 5, Scarborough Realty LLC, Mercedes-Benz dealership located at 137 U.S. Route 1. Uh, again, I'll let Tom um, kind of just bring, bring mm -hmm. us all up to speed on this. Before I, I do do that, um, I did want to just mention I appreciate that this is not entirely, you know, not a workshop item that we had done. Um, I didn't particularly think that the scope of this was really outside of, you know, it's already a contract zone. I think it's only maybe a, was it a quarter acre. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't really feel that it was necessary to have an entire workshop on this item. So uh, it is <laughs> in front of us today. Um, so, Tom, if you would, yes, if you would just uh, kind of talk about what this is. With that, uh, we certainly do have representatives here from uh, Prime Motor Group who are going to uh, provide some better detail on the contract zone. But quickly, by way of background, in 2002, uh, this council approved a contract zone that allowed redevelopment of the, that site. Um, it predates me, but I understood it was a, a fairly rundown, industrial-looking type site. Mm -hmm. um, what? <coughs> 
by way of further background, one of the standards, the basic fundamental threshold uh, question for contract zones has to do with improvements to the community. And I think it was found uh, pretty clearly by that prior council that um, what we see there today is a vast improvement over what existed prior. Mm -hmm. And um, what you'll hear this evening is a, a slight expansion um, of that contract zone to incorporate uh, an abutting parcel, a small parcel. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, is it Dan Doucette? Yes. Dan is here uh, to perhaps uh, provide you a little more detail on their proposal. Dan, I would ask that you take the handheld mic and speak into that while, okay. while you're there. Okay, so uh, you're going to turn it on and put it in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, this is good right here. Uh, what we're looking to do is is uh, take the Sunoco station and uh, tear it down, get rid of all the, the structures and this, the current signage, <coughs> uh, get rid of the two curb cuts that exist, hmm. and take the, uh, the stormwater and manage it on our own stormwater management system relative to the way it's handled now, which is sheeting off into the street. Hmm. Uh, this is the, uh, the current look, uh, and, and this is what we'll end up with here. Uh, this is an overhead look. Uh, this is what the Sunoco station is now, uh, and, and you can see here what we're looking for. Basically, we're not looking to put any, any structures, uh, just just uh, additional uh, display and parking area. We are looking to add on to the building right here, but uh, but to remain within the current uh, contract zone specifications. We're not looking to increase that square footage at all. We're just looking to uh, complete the the initial uh, the initial uh, approval. Would you like to me to pass this over there? Or uh, yeah, I think no, uh, we actually have a smaller yeah, one yeah, we in have the packet. Yeah. All right. Well, um, so real quick, so that that's just kind of a overview. Um, at this time, what we'll do is we'll take any public comment if there is any, and then we'll need to get a motion on the floor so that we can ask questions if we'd like. So, is there anybody from the public that would wish to speak on this item? And seeing none, we'll close the comment section. Is there a motion? Approval. First and a second. And so, did, is there any discussion or any questions? Peter? Yeah, just maybe a little bit of, of history or context. I think I have talked to a couple of the councils that were involved under the original sort of approval. And I think it was important to them that they had some type of green sort of setback so the cars weren't right on the road. Can you can you kind of update us what their thinking was then uh, and yes. what your thinking is now and how many how many spaces are going to be right on the curb? Yes, okay. So initially I was act, uh, initially at the approval meetings back when we when we when we first built this building and yeah. and, and uh, the uh, the council back then was was not interested in looking like a car dealership at all. Mm -hmm. It was they wanted to look like a business park. And uh, we had since come before the planning board, and uh, we, I don't know if you remember, but it was initially approved with a big hump here. You couldn't even see the the building. Mm -hmm. We came back and they, they amended that. So we were able to lower that. It looked like there was a, a big hill here. Mm -hmm. uh, so in order for this to work for us, a 40-foot 40 setback, 40 setback wouldn't work here because it would leave no land for us. Uh, so uh, we're looking to, because this is not a very deep piece of property. Yeah, no, I see that. There's no ad advantage for us to buy it uh, unless we could, unless we could have this parking here. So how many cars on the front line? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven cars on the front line. Eleven. Okay, because I'm just thinking, I think, because I think the same sort of well, strategy applied to the Jaguar dealer that's further down sure. the one, yes. they're also set back. Yes. Absolutely. So I'm just wondering how they might <laughs> react. So I'm just uh, wondering, is there any is there any compromise where there can be some Well, you know, we looked at compromise, and in that piece of property, there's no depth to it at all. There's no way for there's them to go. Uh, I just wanted to help maybe answer a question a little bit. I had Tom look it up. It, it's actually 0.2125 of an acre. 
so um, it's actually less than a quarter of an acre. So I just, just yeah. so everyone understands how big the parcel is. So. Um, did you have? Did you finish your question, Peter? Like, I guess. I guess my only question was whether there was any space at all to set those cars a little further back, and I can't. Looks like there's some space. That was my only question. Uh, whether um, there's some accommodation that can be made to kind of preserve the original council's view. Okay. So, so our cars will actually be in line with the cars of the adjacent piece of property that runs adjacent to that. That's, lot. What, I just, that's what I was just going to ask you. They, they'll actually line up. Uh, right. They line up with down the, uh, here. With the, with the, the building is <laughs> yeah. So it's the same, yeah. the same um, space. Well, the, the planning board will yeah. have sure. their own requirements yeah. and okay. whatnot. But, um, Councillor Bayline? Yeah. Um, two items, uh, historically. One is, uh, before being elected to the council or school board, I actually had a chance to speak on in favor of this project because I actually live off of the Portland Farms Road at the bottom of the hill, if you know where that is in comparison to the structure, so I remember the old structure. Um, I think that the current development has not only met its uh, expectations but um, actually exceeded that. And I actually believe that even the new development exceeds that and actually brings it into line even more favorably than what was originally proposed because I was on the council when it was um, actually brought in. Oh, okay. So um, there might be other councilors that dis differ and mm -hmm. had different opinions, yeah. but yeah. I've been very favorable given the uh, development of that particular project, um, and I do like this. Um, I think it's aesthetically pleasing, um, and it's very appealing based upon even its setbacks. If you think about it, um, and you think about where the car is set back now, Mm -hmm. uh, it is really no different in comparison to where what they're adding, which is nothing more than an 11, 11, 11 car yeah. parking lot. Um, um, nothing against the uh, not, not, nothing against the gas station that's there now. I just think that it's uh, it's contiguous with what the current use is and is very appealing and should be moved forward. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions or comments for for this item? <coughs> <No>. <coughs> All right, um, thank you for your time. My, my two cents will be, um, you know, I think the Sonoga is an eyesore. And <laughs> it is, uh, you, you were very much more polite about it, Sean. Um, I think at this point in time, it's also probably, you know, you look at with these things, well, what, 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 what can happen here? Well, it can stay a gas station. Um, it's not a good location for a gas station. That's a dangerous section to try to be pulling in and out of. Um, so I was glad to read that your proposal does include getting all, rid of all the curb cuts, closing it off. It, you're going to make it look clearly a lot nicer than it does now. Um, so it does have my support. I will mention uh, that this will not stop the people who run that red light. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one, and that is a concern, but that has nothing to do with your property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they won't <laughs> have nothing to do with it. They're horrible, by the way. Are you uh, going to put the real expensive cars out there? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it'll be all Mercedes, so. Yeah. All right. They're all expensive. Mm. Smart curves. So um, we do have a first. We have a second to refer to planning board. And sure do. So uh, at this time, we'll um, vote. All those in favor? And that's unanimous. Well, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Number eight. Looks like a nice, nice oh, addition. Yeah. Yeah. Really does. Yeah. All right. So item number eight is non-action items. We have none, so we will move to item number nine, which is standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. And we'll start down on your end, Sean. Oh, always. Um, so <laughs> I actually share a couple with uh, Councilor Donovan. So we'll uh, piggyback a little yeah. bit if, if everyone doesn't mind. Uh, first is with finance. I actually want to hand out a couple of. Uh, um, several handouts, actually. Um, I'll just pass these down. The first is, um, I couldn't remember exactly what I had passed out at the last meeting, so I'm going to pass it out again. Really what this is is a synopsis uh, statement of the um, budget process improvement suggestions that were um, agreed to with the joint session of the school board. Um, there are six items, seven items that, uh, <coughs> that we kind of came to a conclusion that we would like to look at and how we really uh, move to the next stage, which is forming uh, what we call norms or uh, norms of uh, procedures, and that is how we relate to each other, how we work together going forward um, with our budgets, 
um, as well as with the presentation of the entire budget for the town so that it's more cohesive and really one entity that presents that forward. So this is the final document. What's going to happen next is that our next meeting is tomorrow at 1.30. It is here in uh, Chambers. And really, um, the purpose of that meeting is to define those norms. <coughs> um, um, I hate to admit it, but I actually kind of consider that meeting to be relatively short. Um, we're all professionals. We're all grown-ups. I would hope that we all treat each other as such, and therefore, um, it's really very simple for us to define how we want to communicate going forward. Um, the issue is going to be not how we, um, not how we determine mm -hmm. what we want, it's how we then measure what we have done um, after the fact. So um, we're going to be cognitive of that fact as well. The other piece that I wanted to um, send down the line, I think I did, did I? Mm -hmm. yes. is, um, is the second page, mm -hmm. which is really the Finance Committee schedule. Uh, for the new year that is not defined yet. I was going to say it's all zeros. It's all zeros, but I want <laughs> you to at least be aware of how it was set up in the past. We are going to be looking at that. Um, that is our second task um, at the joint session tomorrow uh, to really come down with that. I will tell you that um, the focus really is being driven from a um, what I'll call an enterprise perspective. It's not about the historical perspective of where we take our budget and we literally um, go line item by line item, but we look at the major cost drivers. We look at what are the drivers that are uh, causing us um, for increases, what might be some of the decreases, if there are any, and then really driving it from that, including new investment, um, closing out old investments and things such as that at, at both levels, and really come up with, coming up with a schedule. I will tell you that there seems to be some motivation to have the school's budget and the school presentation a little earlier in that cycle so that we can absorb uh, what they have presented to us and really partner with them in presenting a uh, unified budget on behalf of the town. Um, I will report back to you what the outcomes are after tomorrow's meeting, but uh, we're really still at that infancy stage where we haven't really defined too much, um, but uh, we are at least moving that forward. Um, everyone's schedule has been a little bit difficult uh, because of illnesses and conferences and whatever it might be, so I do apologize for not getting a little faster, but we are at least on schedule, if not ahead of schedule. And the last item that I'm going to pass out um, that I want to at least forward down is something that I presented to um, our council. We had actually had a council of finance committee meeting on January 14th. And really what I, what I want to ask you to do uh, for me and for the council committee is to help me prioritize what we want to look at um, in re retrospect to the budget, whether it's county government, uh, main revenue sharing, uh, uh, police services, whatever it might be, if you can categorize within three categories of highest, medium, and lowest priority, um, there are six categories within each of those, uh, hopefully you can keep that to um, at least 18 items. I can definitely email it to everyone. Um, but the goal is that you, if you can help me by telling me you want me to look in your highest priority county government because of the increases that have happened, because then I will prioritize with outside resources to bring County Commissioner Jameson or the county manager who's also a Scarborough resident. I'll, I'll look at um, um, bringing those services in so that we can then have a conversation about it, and this will help that. Um, I do want to mention that the manager, um, based on our conversation, is looking at um, how we present our budget and um, trying to streamline that budget process so that we truly become an executive board and that we look at the major enterprise global initiatives. That does not mean that we can't, um, in the, my, my best word, deep dive into some of the data because what will become supplement to the bigger picture conversation is the line item uh, issues. Because everyone has, an, uh, you, know, you know, why did this increase 300% or why, you know, why are we funding X, Y, and Z, you know, you know, those type of things. So there's going to be an evaluative process that allows you to still vent and still ask those questions. Um, but the goal is that at this level um, that we really look at the bigger picture because there's so many things. And really, um, the consensus is, um, at least what I've heard so far, is that going line item by line item is just so innocuous. And it's just, um, the question is, is that really valuable? 
uh, especially for a manager. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to hold um, departmental managers um, <coughs> accountable. It just means that we're going to approach it slightly different so that we can ask the right questions. And um, our goal is that we're going to keep you informed, we're going to keep you involved, ask you um, how you want to proceed with that so that everyone is engaged, uh, but then respect the fact that um, uh, we have, um, I'm hurting a lot of cats. And so um, I'm trying to make, um, you know, our joint committee uh, very workable, our individual committee very workable, and um, I think that we can come up with a very reasonable uh, result at the end, and everyone will be very happy with that. Um, so um, I do appreciate that, and I want to, uh, again, um, I just want to thank uh, Chris Siazzo, who is the uh, school board's chair, uh, for cooperating and, and really working together in this process. And uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's outcomes because I think it's really going to set us uh, down the right path. Um, but there's a lot of work uh, based upon what we've heard from the, the administration about what we're going to do. So uh, keep that in mind. When do you need it back by? Um, if you can give it to me by tomorrow, that would be great. <laughs> but if you can't, um, as soon as possible. Um, no, no, I mean. Um, you said you were going to email it. Yes, I, I, I can definitely email it to everybody. This, um, and by the way, this priority sheet is for council uh, prioritization. It's not for the joint committee. Uh, so this is just for the council so that I can schedule resources, get people into the door, you know, whether, like I said, whether it's a county commissioner or, or it's a state personnel or a legislator, that this will help me address the issue that you want because I'll combine that. Um, and then I'm going to work. I'm going to be working with Tom. I will tell you that one of the things that we talked about, it seemed pretty reasonable with Tom, um, was that at the end, if people have line item questions, because that will be a supplement, it will be an addendum to the entire budget, is that we're going to have a process where you can submit your requests for information, and Tom will provide uh, public comment regarding that line item from his staff. Um, that way, there's one consolidated. <coughs> resource of all those questions and everyone gets that because there's been some citizens that said they would like to have that information as well and I want to try to accommodate as much as possible that we can um, and meet everyone's needs. So um, That's with finance. Um, the, the other items, I, I mean, I've got a couple of committees. Um, the other item I wanted to mention was, um, oh, CITCO, but you're going to cover that? Mm -hmm. He's going to cover set go. Um, I did actually attend my first Eco Main meeting, and I got to tell you, um, it was pretty darn cool. Um, I got a full tour and orientation of the facility and how they transfer uh, transfer everything from waste hauling. They bring it in and uh, they burn it, uh, they sort it, burn it, and then convert it to electricity. Uh, Kevin Rose was an incredible mentor during that time and getting to see it. And then I attended my first meeting. Um, I have sent an email to the chair on how you would like to have me communicate the updates uh, regarding those meetings because it's pretty, um, I think it's pretty significant um, because of the cost impact long term regarding the, because um, as you know, uh, we have a landfill in our town. Um, and we have a significant future cost regarding that landfill that's related out 30 years um, that are um, very hefty. So um, I would take any recommendations from the chair or from others on how you'd like us, um, us being Mike Shaw and I, to communicate those updates, including financials. Um, there's some significant developments uh, within the organization in the sense that, uh, as you probably know, with uh, fuel prices being down, that causes uh, energy prices to increase, which is causing electricity from a manuf manufacturing perspective to be down, which is causing a shortfall within the production that gets related to increased tipping fees to us. Um, so um, there's things that impact us, and I'd just like to know how you would like me to communicate that. Um, they have a great uh, semi-annual report that they just produced, including financial statements. Uh, that are high level. They don't uh, get into a lot of detail, but uh, we can actually ask for those at the Scarborough level about what our contribution is. I'd love to um, uh, provide that to you, so I'll do whatever you would like um, because I know that we haven't really received a report, and I have talked to Kevin about at least 
doing a semi-annual report from him, if not at least an annual report from the director and maybe a semi, semi-annual from Mike and I. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to know what you guys, uh, what you folks would like to have because it's a significant partnership and it's a long-term partnership and I don't think that we should forget about it because um, I remember the days when we did and I don't want to see that happen again. So. Good. Good. Awesome. Uh, yeah, let me uh, just update you on uh, uh, SEDCO uh, uh, one development that Karen Martin uh, wished to pursue, and that is to begin the process of having uh, each counselor be able to meet with uh, one of the larger businesses in town, this one-on-one connection, uh, which uh, she feels is uh, important to get people to really understand uh, uh, what the town council uh, is doing and thinking, uh, and uh, she's going to. She started with me. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, meeting with one of the larger <coughs> healthcare providers since I had a background in uh, representing healthcare providers uh, in a past life. So a volunteer uh, for all restaurants. So. All restaurants. <laughs> 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 Check out the restaurants. So uh, <laughs> as as you would always expect with Karen, she's right on top of these things. And, very impressive. Okay. Henry? Uh, regretfully, due to my illness, I was not able to attend either the Long Range Planning or Conservation Commission. I was just looking at the Conservation Commission notes, and I just wanted to note that Peter Slavinsky is going to be making a presentation to the Town Council on February 4th. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jessica's nodding. And that the subject of this meeting will be a section of the shoreline at Pine Point near Pillsbury Drive, subject to a state conservation easement. It was noted that illegal paths and sand fences have been constructed by homeowners in response to natural, I can't talk, and man-made processes impacting the area, and his presentation will discuss the dynamics of these processes. So I thought, you know, as fellow counselors, you might be interested in knowing that that is coming up. And um, also there was a notation from Jay Chase that there's there's an audit going on with the EPA regarding separate stormwater sewer overflow and whatever, and we're expecting a report in 60 days on that. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow I will be spending the whole day in Augusta, lucky me, um, with the Legislative Policy Committee for the Maine Municipal Association. I have a packet about this thick of the various bills and whatever that have been introduced. Some of them are still just titles. For example, there are 13 titles in there doing with casinos. So we can expect that that's going to possibly come back. One of them was introduced by Representative Vashon. I haven't seen the language of it yet. Um, there's obviously we'll be discussing the impact of uh, budget and um, how as a, a municipal association we will be reacting or lobbying or working uh, on these various things. So I'll give you guys an update uh, when I get back. but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, how would you, Peter? Yeah, actually, some of the some of the committees that haven't met all met all on the same night. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> week, so, so it's a little busy. Um, just kind of some real quick updates. The shell shellfish conservation. They spent a little bit of time talking about the season and maybe extending some of that time. The issue that they are facing, though, and I know Tom's been involved and is helping them. There there are some issues with some. Um, Federal labor laws and other things that will be the subject of their next meeting. I think, Tom, you offered to kind of help guide them through that process, so that's kind of on their agenda. Um, Same night, Coastal Harbors met, and again, they talked a little bit about the dredge project being done. They did raise some concerns about there still seem to be some areas that maybe they felt weren't dredged the right depth, but I think, again, Tom's been involved, and some of that may involve ledges, and they weren't able to move the material. I think the Army Corps of Engineers is going to do a survey to figure out where they are and what they've done. So that was sort of one issue. Um, and then they mentioned some issues with the lifts on the pier, but I think, Tom, you said they were going to come down and get them repaired and get them repaired already. Um, on the 13th, also, the Transportation Committee met, and they had some interesting conversation. There's, they were asked to really investigate um, all of the railroad crossings and some of the noises with the whistles. Mm-hmm. They've done a lot of work. They were actually 
have some answers, are going to come back with a proposal to the council, so we'll, we'll expect that. They've done some work on updating and putting in an extra right-hand turn lane into the Holmes Payne Road sort of intersection. They say it will increase traffic flow by about 30%. They're going to be coming back with a proposal for us with showing what that is and some, some estimates. Um, great news, they, they're moving ahead with the Eastern Trail section, at least from Pleasant Hill over to South Portland. They hope to be able to start construction this summer, which is a great thing for all those that kind of enjoy that. Um, they're also going to be working in the future on some crosswalk policies, age-friendly communities, um, some transit awareness. And then just yesterday, I met with the seniors group. Um, they reviewed their financials year to date. They're on target. Um, they have taken a look at the <coughs> budget for next year already, and it's relatively flat, so that's, that's good news. Um, they are talking with IT about trying to improve sort of their communication platform to make it easier for seniors to kind of get in and get information and navigate. Um, and there was some conversation about some of the seniors are really asking about is there some way that they can get more use of our public facilities, especially some of the school facilities for meetings and pickleball seems to be an issue that keeps coming up. So I don't, you know, so I, that was sort of the conversation. Thank you. Uh, this evening, uh, before our workshop, the Fair Hearing Authority got together. It's probably the first time the Fair Hearing Authority has gotten together in probably 15 or 20 years. <laughs> oh. uh, we got together, Mealy, uh, Jacqueline Mandrake, and uh, our Human Resources Manager, and uh, Rennie Daniel, mm -hmm. who is the general assistance coordinator or project leader yep. uh, kind of went through the process of how a person gets general assistance and, um, and we went through the, the process of if somebody wants to uh, oppose a, a decision, how it comes to us and okay. how it's done. It was very educational. Mm -hmm. This is the committee right here. And, uh, <laughs> Hopefully we'll never have to use it. But. Yeah. And the good news is we haven't had to use it today, yeah. right? which is, which is really kudos, kudos to the team. They do a great right. job. Yeah. They do. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, the only thing that I have besides all the other updates was just ordinance met. <coughs> Excuse me, ordinance met yesterday. Um, we talked a lot about parking, parking, <laughs> beach parking. Um, <laughs> Pine Point and Higgins um, are both having some parking issues. <coughs> We're working on those, and hopefully, oh, fingers crossed, we'll have something to send to the council. We really, I'm really going to try to push hard to get those wrapped up before the season starts, um, because both of those areas are in need of our help. So um, that's really it for me. Okay. Um, Tom, well. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, so one of the items I forgot to mention was that my other position is I'm the liaison of the school board. So I just wanted to provide a uh, general update regarding that uh, position. Um, I did have a wonderful opportunity to meet with the uh, third woman of the school board, uh, Donna Bealey. Uh, so really, uh, that first meeting was more intended to kind of get to know you and to set a baseline about our relationship and you know what we can talk about freely and to really develop the relationship and she was extremely open um, as I think she will be open to everyone on the school board she's a, actually a very wonderful person um, I do want to mention that um, I did receive a couple of comments I asked her if she could provide uh, some update regarding you know how questions are asked around town you know you never know uh, with kids and people and you never know. And so there's been this um, contiguous question around um, the future of uh, technology and whether technology is just limited to under eight, um, under the eighth grade, or if it's going to eventually expand from nine to twelve. And I just wanted to mention that um, I did ask her that question, and I wanted the public to know um, the, the response. And that is that um, the, that the school department actually, in the past budget cycle budgeted, and I'm going to use extremely rough numbers. I don't have exact, so I don't want anybody to say, well, it was 520,000. I'm going to use extremely rough numbers because it's more about the content of the conversation than it is about the number. Um, so the, uh, the district actually budgeted about $500,000, and there was some uh, speculation that that really was about 
uh, predetermining how the school department may try to bring in technology into the 9 through 12. And so I did ask uh, cordially to the uh, chairwoman, and she responded wonderfully, that that really um, was money that was spent in what was called technology advancement for the uh, district-wide. It was about bringing up, and I'm going to be general because there was a lot of specific information. It was about bringing up existing services to par so that the school department could teach and the school department could function. Um, it did not support necessarily the 9 through 12 technology that has been um, kind of floated around and talked about as far as laptops and other pieces. It was about bringing the the building's internet code up to date, it was bring, um, all the other pieces that go into that that you can kind of imagine. I, I just wanted to kind of bring that forward and answer because it's an open conversation and it's an open dialogue with them and I really appreciate her providing that answer. Um, and if there's any other questions, um, you know, I kind of look at my, my role as being kind of that, uh, that filter um, and she's happy to help me answer those questions and, and develop the relationship as well. And so. Uh, if there's any questions or anything, I am going to be speaking to them. Um, I've kind of worked out with her as that liaison ship. I'm going to be speaking at their next meeting um, in <coughs> February. The goal is like every other meeting. Um, I don't need to be there uh, every meeting. I was there when I was on the school board once before, and while it was pleasure, um, I don't need to necessarily do that again. So um, God bless them for what they do. But. Um, I will be at their next meeting, so if there's anything that you would like to share, please uh, email me and I'll be happy to share it with them. Okay. Um, on to me. So where am I? Um, appointments met this evening. We do have two names we would like to post, uh, or a few names, I should say. Um, we'd like to move David Kirsten and Michael Wallace to full voting members on the Energy Committee. And we'd also like to move... Timothy Peters as a full voting member on the Housing Alliance. And also, sorry, um, Historic Preservation will be meeting Tuesday, February 3rd at 6.30, which is a Tuesday p.m. Um, they will be looking at, um, as you know, they had a presentation with a workshop. They'll be hopefully going over um, some of the zoning language coming back from Dan about um, before prior to that coming to the council, um, which would be the fourth <coughs> meeting. Um, also, Housing Alliance, um, I did just want to share with you um, some good news, which is the Habitat Project did receive its ZEP permitting, which is what they have been waiting for. So that project pretty much should be green light off that and um, back to planning board back, for one more. Back to review. planning board for one more, but. Um, but we're, we're, we're past the biggest part of the hurdle, so it, it's very okay. likely that we will see the fruition and, and breaking ground this, this year. So nice job, you guys. Uh, with that, that's it for me for committee reports. I'll jump over to Tom for the manager report. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of quick highlights, if I could. Uh, some of these I've mentioned to council, but I think they're worthy of mentioning publicly as well. Uh, many may recall the library uh, this past or this current budget year had a project to expand really some of the internal office space. It was about a $200,000 CIP item that was approved. Uh, to their credit, they've rethought uh, uh, that approach and have come up with a less costly and less invasive uh, project that's going to require just a very limited shutdown. Uh, so I, I want to acknowledge and appreciate their efforts in being thoughtful about uh, use of tax dollars, uh, and they're still going to be able to accomplish what they want to. Um, also, I'm pleased to, to mention that due in large part to our efforts for safety improvements and this council witnessed us receiving an award lately, uh, where that matters is that our experience modification has come down less than par, meaning we pay, we actually have a 13% savings um, on premiums. And that translates to a $54,000 savings in this budget, so um, it really uh, is a good reminder that safety does pay in many, many ways, not in, including the bottom line. Uh, staff has been exploring something called uh, age-friendly communities. This is a program uh, now taking up uh, through AARP. Um, we don't necessarily need to combine our efforts with them, but they've got at least a framework to be thinking about um, different ways that we can prepare and be age-friendly. 
uh, and that can really take shape in many, many different forms and needs to. Uh, so this is an effort that uh, really would spread across many of the existing committees and departments, and we look to kind of broaden that conversation further. Um, Eco Maine is actually in their Eco Excellence Award timeframe. Uh, Friday this week is the deadline. I can email out the application, but every member community has the opportunity to uh, put forward an individual or a group that says something that's worthy of recognition. So uh, we're always looking for good ideas. I'll send that around. It does require a pretty quick turnaround, so I'll do it before I go home tonight. Uh, last two things I have done, as the Council's aware, a very preliminary um, assessment or analysis of the impact of the proposed state budget. Um, I say preliminary because it's just that. Uh, this is going to change. It's now a legislative process, and inevitably it will ebb and flow over <laughs> the next couple of months. So um, in concert with the Finance Committee, we'll continue to kind of monitor that progress, and we'll try to do periodic analysis just so we have a sense of where we are. Uh, and with the cooperation of Councillor Katarina, we are coordinating a legislative delegation meeting on February 18th, and I suspect that might be uh, a focal point of that conversation. And lastly, to the dredge uh, issue, I did have the occasion to speak with uh, the project coordinator, Mike Walsh, today. Uh, the survey is not in his hands yet. He did relate uh, in conversations with the contractor they actually dredged 150 feet further beyond the end of the channel. And for anyone familiar with that area, the shoaling that's occurred with Mother Nature's help extends almost all the way out to the Prouts Neck Yacht Club. Uh, and so though it was beyond the congressional mandate of the federal channel, um, practically speaking, you need to be able to get to the channel for it to be effective. Um, so there still may be problems further out because of that shoaling. And frankly, even since they pulled out, um, winter storms and uh -huh. wind and surf will, will already start to bring that material back in. Uh, but by all accounts, the contractors certainly met their obligations, but we'll stay on top of it further. So, thank you. All right, on to council member comments. We'll start on the other end. We'll start with Peter. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Adam? Uh, I'd just like to uh, thank Sean and Peter and Bill for the outstanding job they're doing so far with the Finance Committee, I mean, this is going to be one extremely difficult process, yeah. and I think with a new approach and more communications between the Town Council <coughs> and the Board, I think it's going to be very successful, and I wish you good luck, and I'm <laughs> sure everybody here on the Council is going to stay right on top of it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say, to, um, say condolences to Chairwoman Holbrook for the passing of her grandfather, um, and also it's her son's birthday today, so <laughs> we all should wrap up as soon as possible so she can get home. Uh, <laughs> and that's it. Uh, Jim Reese? I, re I really don't have anything to add today. I'll pass. Bill? Uh, I did want to recognize Doug Bennett as the yeah. person of the year in Scarborough. Uh, teacher here in town, and uh, it's a very nice award, and he obviously sounds like a terrific person. Yeah, uh, he's a good guy. wanted the uh, council members to be aware that the Rules and Policy Committee will uh, uh, be meeting in the next week, uh, and uh, uh, that will be announced soon, at the, the actual date. Anything that town council members think might be appropriate for rules to consider, this would be an appropriate time to bring it to uh, our attention. I think it's Peter, Jean Marie, and myself mm -hmm. uh, are uh, sitting on the, uh, the reason, one of the reasons is a couple of items, but uh, the one that obviously we all kind of worked with a little bit at the last meeting was uh, 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 Mr. Pio's uh, tax foreclosure. And I think what we we're going to, and of course it brought to light that there was this period of, for, since 1957 there's been <laughs> a lack of action taken on any of those. and. Our town manager wants to be able to clean that up and get us back in, in, in a position. So there's a, a real fairness question when you're dealing with a whole series of properties. So uh, one of the things we're going to be doing is looking at the question of uh, making sure our rules uh, treat all of these properties fairly, all the past owners fairly, 
uh, uh, we'll also obviously be looking at the question of uh, going forward uh, and whether or not that process is exactly the way we want it. It has this kind of uh, uh, two-tier system of if you are, have a residential property, there's a certain way in which uh, you are treated with the opportunity to have a uh, uh, contingent sale, uh, uh, a conditional uh, sale contract <clears throat> after we have acquired the property, you can still get it back. That's not true for non-residential properties, huh. uh, even though they're in the residential zone. If they're, so we've, we've got we got to look at that because there are all sorts of reasons why this happens. And so we need to kind of look at our principles about what are we trying to do here. And, and my own view is protect, protect the town and the uh, responsibility of collecting taxes uh, and otherwise be fair to, to all concerned. So uh, that, that's uh, going to be a dialogue that we'll be having in front of us during the next month. Huh? <coughs> um, a couple items. First, uh, um, condolences to the chairwoman. I'm sorry to hear about your family. Uh, and congratulations to your son's birthday <laughs> as well. Um, God knows one year older means that you're one year older. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I never reminded you of that. <laughs> I thought I was going to remind you, but no, congratulations. Um, I actually, um, something I heard at the end of the last meeting that I want to mention today is that I do want to mention about uh, Tony Atato Sr.'s uh, passing. Um, uh, Mr. Atado was an incredible person um, who I got to meet um, by chance, and um, I believe, I can't remember, I did actually try to look this up, I don't remember if he actually served as a selectman or if he served both as a it's selectman a and then as a counselor. A counselor. But he definitely was a counselor, yep. um, and I just want to uh, mention to his family because, of course, uh, Tony Jr. is our EMS director. Um, chief and does an incredible job to the family. Um, when you serve your community like he did, it's absolutely incredible and it's a legacy to see how his children have com served our community as well. And I just want to give my condolences to the family because he was an incredible person. Um, he was actually the first person to call me when I came home um, to Scarborough in the early 2014 and said, uh, tell me you're not stupid enough to run again, but I hope you do. Uh -huh. um, and so it was a pleasant, uh, pleasant to hear from him because he was an incredible person. Um, so uh, condolences to the family, especially to a former town councilor. Um, I do want to mention, um, and, and, and whether it's by purpose or whether it's by accident, you know, uh, one of the items that uh, we had originally discussed regarding our workshop and our goals, it was thrown in at the last minute about casinos and about that the, that the town council should take a position regarding that, and I do appreciate the fact that it <coughs> did not rise to an issue that we should take a, uh, take issue with, because I personally believe, regardless of whether you're for or against, it's an item that the citizens as a whole needs to decide. It's not one for the council, and the great thing is that we have uh, ordinances in place that allow that to immediately go to public opinion or public uh, vote, so um, I appreciate that, um, because it's a very sensitive issue. Um, the other item I wanted to mention is that um, I just want, at least for my colleagues, but for the public as well, is that um, in today's technology environment, there's so many ways of communicating, and I want to apologize to some extent, but not really, um, is, and that is that um, um, there is a lot of communications by this council by email in which public opinion is shared, and I'm extremely reserved in commenting in on that because I think that that information should be really shared publicly, um, especially if it rises to a point in which the, either the manager must um, gather data, um, provide an opinion on whatever it might be. Um, so I don't opine on that, um, but only because I want that to be here. Um, I'm not trying to call anybody out necessarily, but I'm just simply asking is that I think that more of what we communicate by email needs to be uh, done as an agenda item. Uh, if it's truly worthy of a conversation. Um, and sometimes that conversation is just simply, I agree, not agree, whatever it might be. Um, I've been bitten a couple times by email, <laughs> so I just don't simply like to um, do that at this particular time. And I just think that it's better for us to do this in public, um, no matter what the item is, whether it's 
revenue sharing, whether it's uh, dog ordinances, wh whatever it might be, I just encourage that if it's worthy of a conversation that we have it as an item um, going forward. Um, the other item I just wanted to mention was around EcoMain. Um, I, I really want to thank Michael Shaw. Um, he has been our representative to EcoMain for the past several years, um, really after a transition that happened when I was here before. He's done an incredible job. He has garnered the respect of our board um, and has done an, um, a, a great leadership role for us, um, especially during all that transition in which um, um, some of our representation may not have been um, to the fullest extent. And I, I just really want to thank him because we continue to garner the respect of the other communities as a result of our leadership back in the 90s and early 2000s when we really forced ourselves to change EcoMain or what was then called RWS. And, um, you know, Mike serves on the executive committee and the finance committee as vice chair. And he does, um, you know, Tom, just so you know, he does an incredible job for our town. And I just really want to thank him for that, um, as well as thank the town for appointing him. And I appreciate that. Um, uh, last but not least, is um, it's about the state budget. I am getting inundated because I, I don't know if it's chair of being the finance committee about the state budget and what the impact's going to be. And I hate to be blunt, I have no stinking clue what's going to happen mm -hmm. because um, the, the hostility in Augusta, no matter how unified they may try to say they are, it's going to get worse. And the fact is that we have no idea really where everything is going to fall out. Now, we have some assumptions that I think that are fairly easy, but we also have some local things that play into this. And um, all I'm asking is that those who have contacted me and even those who just simply watch, uh, be patient. I promise you that the Finance Committee is going to be open and uh, transparent about what we're dealing with. Um, but it's going to be an extremely difficult process, especially when um, we are in a need, um, or I'm sorry, we are in a time of need both at the uh, municipal level as well as at the school level. Um, but there, it's going to come. To, it's going to come down to principle. It's going to come down to a little bit of ideology, and it's going to come down to um, some basic economics. Um, but it's going to be extremely tough. And I just ask that all of us um, take an extreme. Um, uh, I don't want to say passive approach, a respectful approach. Um, and that's because um, while we can sit there and draw a line that says um, it cannot be more than whatever the CPI is for veterans or whatever the CPI is, um, sometimes that can't happen. I'm not saying it has to be higher. I'm not saying it can't be lower. I'm just simply saying is that we have to be open to the conversation because the state budget, as it's been presented, is throwing an incredible barrier in the middle of the road, and we have to be aware of all of that, <coughs> it's going to be extremely tough. Um, but I think we can get through it and we can be um, uh, a very good community at the end of that. So I just want to keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to make at this time um, the condolences that we usually offer to, to members in our community that have since passed and, and um, so far uh, Doris, family of Doris Briggs, to the family of Irene Layton, for the family of Ruth Thompson, for the family of Kathleen Tompkins, and of course my own grandfather, um, David Green, who passed away. Um, sorry. <laughs> so I want to talk about him. <laughs> um, certainly not a, um, you know, he spent a lifetime here, not a lifelong resident, but he spent a lifetime, did marry my um, grandmother, who is a life, lifelong resident. So, at any rate, that's it for my comments. Um, Let's do it again. So, <laughs> <laughs> Should have bought two.